site and dumped onto the front of the site where the spill occurred. So if you go down two inches, you're really not going to get much of a sample of something that's, that's, uh, that's contaminated. Then they went down uh, two feet, and then they went down eight feet, and that's the orange and the purple dots. The two blue dots on the left-hand side of the, uh, in the area 29 and uh, next to it are two wells that they dug for uh, water testing, groundwater testing. And you can see the results on the side of here, the contaminants that they found. And 0.22 is a safe level. So you've got 0 0.83, 0 0.61, 0 0.88, 0 0.39, 0 0.63, 0 0.4, or 4.8, 11, 0.28. Now, go ahead to the next slide. That testing on the first, on the first map, that testing was done in September. And when the DTSC got their results back, as Marilyn said they were low, I'm sorry, not Marilyn, as Penny, said that those results were low. And when they got the EPA test uh, results, they were higher. So I will give the DTSC credit for the fact that they did do a second testing when they found out that the EPA results were higher. But a word on that, it took us forever to get them to, uh, to let the EPA come in and do the testing. The city manager of the city of Riverside said, well, DTSC is the, you know, they're, they're the big dogs in the state, so we have to let them do their job. And we wanted EPA testing all along, and thank God we got it because without that, we probably never would have got the second round of testing. So the second round of testing, you can see these black circles with the crosses at, at, at the intersections of these uh, grids. And those are an extra 136 sites that they took testing on in the second round. So they, they added up 144 additional soil samples to the original. If you go to the next slide, please. This map just shows where all the samples were taken throughout the site. But the next four slides are the ones that really mean something. In fact, it's not the next four, it's probably after this. We changed it. So there was 159 samples taken. Each sample had some level of PCBs. Now, the, the county actually says there should be zero as the level of testing for this. The federal government and the state took a, a number of 0.22. The newspaper the other day said that it was anything under one, but the agreed to cleanup at this site was 0.22. So 159 samples taken, each sample had some level of PCBs. Out of 159 samples, 89 indicate PCB levels above the 0.22, which is safe for humans, according to the state and the federal government. Out of the 89 samples, 33 indicated levels between 1.0 to 131, which is extreme high levels of PCBs. So here's the four slides I was talking about. These are all, this is a list of all the samples taken. Anything that's yellow is higher than it should be. Three. So. All of those yellow uh, blocks are all the ones that are higher than they should be. Some of them were up to 76. And if you divide that by 0.22, that's 400 times the level of toxicity that's acceptable. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Uh, that uh, ends my part of this, but I would like to say, uh, that we keep talking about the soil and building the homes and all this, and it's nice to be right, but it really is the people that live around there that we really need to start talking about. Those people have been exposed to this for 13 years. The stuff is in their attics. Every time they run their heat and air conditioning, it goes throughout their house. Uh, the soil can sit there forever, and we could always do something with it. But these people are not going to be around forever unless we take action. So at this point, I'd like to uh, reintroduce my friend Marilyn Whitney.